I was saved during praise and worship. It was a long time ago. But what I discovered was that it says that the king is inhabited. He inhabits the praises of his people. He comes down with his throne and he just loves it. And he loves those that worship him. So I'm happy to be able to deliver this message tonight because I don't know about anybody else, but man, you know, I've often wondered, could the Lord not come and talk to me at like eight o'clock in the morning? But this 233 stuff, wake me up. I've said, Lord, you want me to be able to pay attention, don't you? And he said, there are no distractions at 2.33 in the morning. It's just your flesh. Okay. I say that to just kind of let y'all know that I didn't get this, this one driving down the highway. Let me pray. Father, your people have come to hear your word, to be set free. I ask that tonight anything that entangles us you'll cut away from us and put it into a fire that'll consume it that will never be hindered again by those things that come to get us in jesus name amen i want to talk to y'all tonight about the unity of the body When God sent Moses to the children of Israel, in the book of Exodus, God gave him miracles to perform so that the people would believe that he had heard from God. And likewise, in the same way, Elijah the prophet spoke to his unbelieving nation and he called down the fire from heaven to prove that God had really spoken through him. I haven't seen the Shekinah glory fall. Been to Uganda where I met a Lord Jesus that I'd never known before. Finding out that he was sovereign, that he didn't need me. He'd like for me to participate in his kingdom, but he didn't need me. As we go along, if you've noticed, the world is going to hell in a handbasket in every little way, every little detail. The Lord's coming is drawing closer than it ever has been. And I want y'all to know that the closer that that coming is, the closer we need to be to one another. Because when crazy stuff starts to happen, the world's not going to comfort you. The world's not going to tell you the truth. But the body of Christ coming together will. Jesus said in John 13, verses 34 through 35, A new commandment I give you to love one another. As I've loved you, 
as I've loved you. What does that look like? i tell you what that looks like. That's having the mindset of, I remember your sin no more. I remember your trespasses no more. I choose to remember those conversations that you had with your neighbor and it got ugly. I choose to forget that and remember it no more. Hebrews 8, 12, for I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. And you're, you are to also love one another by this. Everyone will know that you're my disciples by the way you love one another. So everybody in White Wright and, 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 and Trenton and Leonard and Bonham and Bells and Tom Bean will know that we are his disciples by the way we choose to love one another. See, loving one another is a choice. It's a choice. We've always had a choice. We just didn't exercise it because of pride or doctrine or I don't know. Jesus said to his disciples that it was by our loving one another, not the miracles, not the signs and wonders that the world would know that we were his. You know, that's what the world wants to see. Show me. And don't get me wrong, for sure, signs and wonders and miracles are important in this day and time. And when they're performed in the name of Jesus, they point to him. They demonstrate that he is still alive and working in power in our life. The Holy Spirit validates the message in which we preach. But those miracles in and of themselves do not demonstrate that we are disciples of Jesus. Instead, it is our love for one another that demonstrates that. How do I know that? Well, there were these guys, and it says in the end day. I'm in my end day, Eddie. I'm not getting any younger. It says that in the end days, people are going to come to him and say, hey, didn't we raise the dead? Didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we heal the sick and feed the hungry? And he said, away from me, you evildoers, because I never knew you. You see, that there's a spiritual trapping there. We, we get to thinking that if we're not praying for the sick and, and, and feeding those that are hungry, then and don't get me wrong, those are all things that we need to be doing as long as the Holy Spirit's led us to do those things. Because when he's led, you see, it moves it from works to a spiritual, I love you. Motivation. Simply stated, it's because Jesus can work miracles through anybody. Supernatural gifts can work through us whenever God desires that, even if our lives aren't exactly right with Him, He's still going to use us. Oh, you mean I don't have to be all spiffed up, all prayed up? Well, that would be preferable, but then there are those times that sneak up on you and you haven't been praying and you haven't been doing this stuff and the Lord needs you to minister. He's going to use you to minister. But to have real love for one another speaks of a changed life. Because I know that when I was in the world, and gosh, guys, I don't know how many years I'd been saved, 
before I stumbled across this truth. Love speaks of having been with Jesus because Jesus is the only one that can change you, can change your perception of people, can change your heart. In John, the 17th chapter, verses 9 through 12, He's speaking to the Father and he says, I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world. You know, a lot of times, guys, I think we find ourselves spinning our wheels trying to get the world saved. He'll take care of that if we'll take care of one another. Well, I can tell that y'all are really a lively crowd tonight. I, you, you know, at this church, and I hope at others, the one preaching gets some kind of validation by somebody making a noise or getting up to go to the restroom or something happens, somebody moves. You know, they fix the crick in their neck when they go. I'm just kidding, but I'm not. Jesus prays, thank you. Jesus prays, all I have is yours and all you have is mine and the glory will come through them. Did you realize that Jesus is saying that the glory of God is gonna come through the church, through us being available, being tuned in, allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our life and change us says, I will remain in the world no more for they are still in the world and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Well, well, while I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by your name. None has been lost except the one doomed. You know, I hope that we don't miss it. I hope we don't miss the point that irregardless of what you do, he's not too impressed. But when you begin to love somebody that you haven't cared for, or you've decided to forgive somebody that said something ugly six years ago and you're still carrying that old dog around. Or an argument you had, maybe with the wife. Guys, now, easy, listen. I'll never say that my wife is always right. But I'll say that my wife is always right. My wife is not here tonight because we have three or four of our kids in and grandkids and she chose them over me. And that's okay. Principally because when she sits back there, Pastor, I can always kind of know where I'm at by the look she's given me. If she hangs her head, I know it's time to shut up because I'm about to embarrass her. I've said something stupid, which is an unusual Can we just be honest? You know, we all struggle. And yet, Jesus knew that the only way that we as followers of him were ever going to ever get close again would be if the Father sent the Holy Spirit to us. You know, that's the goal that the enemy was able to fulfill was the separation. Can you imagine walking in the cool of the evening with Jesus and just visiting? 
just visiting. He already knew all your needs. He just wanted to love you. And the enemy could not stand that. He, that. So that's how we got separated. And from there on in, everything that God the Father, through Christ, through the Holy Spirit, his goal has been to reestablish that intimacy that Adam had when they were just walking in the cool of the evening visiting. It's the whole goal. It's the whole setting is that he wants us to draw closer to one another. Now, I'll be honest. I don't know how to pull that off. I mean, we all meet in different buildings. We all have a little different doctrines. But we have one thing for sure in common, and that's the one that saved us, Christ Jesus. And he didn't just save us. He sent us the Holy Spirit. This congregation here has heard me say this more than once. When I say it to my wife, she just leaves the room because I preached to her and preached to her, and she finally said, man, can you get them to let you preach and give me a break? But here's the truth. The Holy Spirit, guys, have been given to us to help us accomplish those things that we can't do on our own. If you read this Bible, Fred can't pull this off. I just can't. Now, I can come close. I can work and work and work and work and study the Word and quote the Word, but that ain't going to cut it if I haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to take the Word of God and change my heart. Do you know how I know what condition my heart is in? Because the Word says it's from the abundance of your heart that your mouth speaks. So do we speak kindly of one another? Are we critical of one another? Do we backbite? Are we sweet to our kids? Man, I wish I could take some of those years back. It's our words, guys, that let us know. You know, God's so good that he enables us to know where we stand. I mean, are, are we growing spiritually? Or are we drawing closer to the Lord? Is our interaction with him and our intimacy in closeness to him going to be recognizable? It's recognizable by what we say to one another. Have you noticed the word never says anything about what we say to the world? Well, see, we're not, we're not of the world. We're not in the world. He says, hey, if you're a good soldier, don't get entangled in civilian affairs. Don't, don't, don't get entangled in all of that stuff. Now, I know that there's no one in this room that would do this. One of the things that really, really, really hurts the body is gossip. There, that mouth goes again. See, gossip. Gossip is not a good thing because all you're doing is repeating something that someone else said from their perspective. And if their perspective is whacked, then you're, you're getting the wrong message. You know who else gossips? That would be Satan at the throne at the feet of the Father, accusing the brethren day and night, all he's got is gossip. You, you do realize that he never knows what you're going to do. He doesn't know your future. He doesn't, when I get up in the morning, he doesn't know whether I'm going to go get a cup of coffee or go feed the horse or take a shot. He doesn't know until I open my mouth and I begin to say, I begin to share with the wife, now, this is going to sound silly, but I've proven it. There are times that I write down on a piece of paper and I give my wife the agenda of the day for me. Because I've experienced sometimes when I tell the wife what I'm going to do, the enemy goes out there and sets a trap, and by the time I get there, my foot's in it. 
Yeah. You do remember that he's the prince of the air. You, right? Okay. So Sherry and I will get in a fight. Let me see. Man, it was less than 24 hours ago. But you know what we've learned is sometimes what I say to her isn't what she heard. I know that because of the response I get. All right, now, guys, you have to loosen up just a little because I'm kind of treading on thin ice here. So kind of smile, wave, do something to know. Thank you back there. It's almost like a bid. 350, all right. Keep that in mind. Sherry and I have sat down and we've talked about things that we were going to fight about only to find out that she didn't hear exactly what I said or I didn't hear what she said. Well, how does that work? Well, the enemy loves to mess with you there. If he's the prince of the air, guess what? He can mess with you. And I believe that that's why most of our church family is as separated as we are because he interferes with what we say to one another. They don't understand what it is that we're saying and it causes friction. I've struggled with this. The word says that it is by our words that we'll be vindicated and it'll be by our words that we'll be condemned. Did you hear that? When we go before the king of kings, it will be our words that he's going to visit with us about. And he's not going to visit about what I might have said about something of the world. He's going to Talk to me about how I spoke to my brothers and sisters right here in this church. Did I love on them? Was I critical? Did I ignore them? If you think that you can have a relationship with Christ and treat your brothers and sisters like a redheaded stepchild, that won't work. Guys, it just won't. We've got to be careful not to be critical of one another. And, you know, most of the time what we're critical about is how they did something, what they said and how they said it, instead of looking at the fruit that it produced. I've seen it too many times. We cannot get caught up in the pharisaical cycle of how you do it how you do it. Did you notice that in the word of God, every time Jesus did something, the Pharisees never said a word about the guy being dead and being raised up. They were critical of the fact he did it on Sunday. What? We got to be careful of that. If you don't think that that, I mean, that wasn't just then, that's now. Guys, that's now. Well, the Methodist sprinkle instead of submerge. Okay. That's what they believe. I'm going to let them ride along with it. I won't go into other denominations that I participated in. We don't have the time and I don't have the heart because I love them where they're at. I understand now why they are the way they are. They're still part of the body of Christ. It says that we're made up, the body of Christ is made up of many parts. Many parts. Why is that? Because we each one have a different gifting to offer to the body.
one of the things as the Lord sanctifies us. I want to remind you that a lot of times when you think it's Satan attacking you, no, it's not. It's our flesh rebelling against the Word of God. It's our flesh fighting the Spirit of God. And yet it's easy to just blame it on him. Well, Satan attacked me. No, he didn't. It was our pride or our mouth or something. Matter of fact, do you know how, how prideful a statement that is? Well, Satan attacked me. Oh, you out of how many billions of folks are on the face of the earth, he searched you down in White Rye, Texas and jumped on you. No, could have been a demon or an unclean spirit, but I know where Satan is. He's at the foot of Christ accusing the brethren day and night, and he's accusing us of things that Jesus doesn't remember because he forgave us. Well, everybody stand up. Glory to God. Christ, it says to have the mind of Christ. To forget it and move on. When Jesus comes back to get me, I want him to find me being sanctified and him being glorified than being critical of my brothers and sisters. Again, White Wright, Tom Bean, Leonard, Trenton, all the little towns around are going to know that you've been in the presence of our Lord Jesus by the way you persist in loving one another. Even though we have a flaw, it's kind of interesting. I run across people that remember my past, and it's not a good past. You know what, I've, I've actually had people say to me at a restaurant with the wife sitting right there, I can't believe your church even lets you preach. I can't believe they accepted you in as a member. Because they remember me that way. I say, well, all I can tell you is this. My Lord keeps no list, no list. Amen. He's forgiven and forgotten and glory to God, moved on. So I would encourage you this and then I'm going to pray us out and then we're going to take communion. Is anybody going to object to breaking bread and taking communion with our brothers and sisters? Nobody. Thank you, Jesus. Let me pray us out. Father, I pray that your word will strike our heart. That your word will cause us to realize that it's not works that you're impressed with. It's not works that's going to show us to be followers of you. It is the way that we love one another. We forgive one another. We decide to put ourselves behind Lord teach us to be Christ like and that is that he did not come to be waited on and served but he came to serve give us that heart Lord so that when you come to get us and say well done good and faithful servant 
for you love my people the way I loved you. It's in the name of Jesus. I ask you to do this thing through the Holy Spirit because I can't do it on my own for sure. Anybody said amen? amen. Okay, we're going to take communion with the men that were going to hand out the communion come down. Don't rush now. There you go.